Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching this uh, new episode of our integration podcast. My name is Mattia Maggioli, and today I'm joined with Rabi Abu, who developed this integration POC between Forcepoint Cloud Security Gateway and Splunk. This integration POC provides customers of a first point cloud security gateway with a logs exporter component that retrieves cloud security logs and automatically forwards them into Splunk so that events and insights on cloud security gateway activities for web and or email security can be visualized using the dashboard of our Splunk app and also correlated with other data available into the Splunk instance of the user. Now, this is all from Rabi, so I'll end it over to him for a nice day. Uh, to start here, you download the first point application, and then once you have it, you, you'll have it on the left-hand side here. And then once you click on it, this is basically a collection of um, visualization for all the first point applications. So if we're, we're showing at the moment Cloud Security Gateway, so that's probably what you're going to see. But because I have logs for private access as well, uh, so those both are showed. So we're going to Cloud Security Gateway here, and then you'll get the main dashboard, which will show you um, the four panels, basically. One for uh, web security, one for web activity, and the other two below is for email security and email activity. Email security, we have the number of accepted messages, discarded messages, and quarantined message emails. Basically, that's a trend by day, so it shows you if there is a drop or not. For the activity, we have the inbound and outbound, the direction of the email messages is percentage of them. If we go for web activity, so if you click on web activity dashboard, which is in here, uh, you'll get this dashboard and you have uh, multiple filters up the top. Or, uh, you can filter by time. Uh, the default one is week to date. Uh, you can filter by connection name or by user. The first panel, it shows you the bandwidth sent and received per megabyte and the trend by day. Um, the second panel, it shows you the, ba the bandwidth per user. Um, and, the, and the one beside it is the bandwidth per domain. Um, and then you go below and you see a bandwidth uh, time chart. So in this panel as well, we have the top uh, 10 web categories. Um, and then and here is the rest of the web categories and more information about them. And then down below, you'll have the top 10 of the app categories, traffic. And then you have more information about them in the table beside it. And the last two, you have the top 10 operating system and top 10 user agents are used in this traffic. So that's for the web activity. If we move to the web security, you have the same filters, and then you have the severity by user, and then you have the risky class category, uh, in blocked traffic. So you see there is a 55% here uh, of security awesome. risk yeah. class. And um, then you have the a table that show you the th threat analytics information done by security gateway. Uh, and that would be um, about the file sandbox status, severity, threat name, and the threat type. And the action was done by the, by the service. And there is the count as well. And then you have next is the cloud app information in block traffic. So you need what will you see what cloud app was used in this web traffic. Um, and uh, and there's a category of it here. So you can see if it's a storage or if it's a marketing or any other category that is risky. That's just for uh, block traffic. And you see the, the risk level here as well. Here are the top 10 threads by request. So you have the category name. Uh, and you see what mostly is blocked traffic. It's media file download as it shows here. And you have a bit of uh, more information here if you want to dig more than the top 10. Uh, same story here for the top 10 uh, uh, security risk blocked sites, which is basically based on domain name. And then you have more information here if you want to see more than 10 with the table beside it. You have the block connection information, which will show you the IP and the city and the country and the connection name. And then you show you the source IP and destination IP and account. And then you have the, this map show you the blocked request by destination IP country. So for example, we have 145 uh, requests that were blocked in the United States here. So we'll move to the email. This, this dashboard shows the email activity. Um, and then you have uh, filters. There are a bit different filters for the email than the web. So you have by direction, which you can filter by outbound or inbound. And you have by sender name as well. 
and then once and the time picker as well and once you pick your uh, filters you click submit uh, otherwise there it is taken in consideration all the sender names and all the direction and by default it's week to date the, the time picker so for the with the first panel is the send and receive messages total by day and then we have the receive messages by sender ip countries so we have the the panel next is the sent messages busy hours by day over the last seven days and then you have received messages here and then we have down below the sender domain count and the recipient domain count so for the email security dashboard we have the same filters as the uh, email activity and then the first panel it shows overall overall action applied if it's guaranteed discarded and accepted it shows here 98 percent you have the overall filters count in email traffic so you could see the there's five spam here and then we have got two tables here that shows suspicious suspicious messages count by sender or by recipient and it shows the action was applied guaranteed or discarded and the count and the sender name and recipient name in here uh, you have the monthly virus detection count and email traffic and we don't have any virus in this in detected in this traffic um, you have the spam messages information so you'll get what time spam score by the service and then you get the subject the recipient address and the from address as well you get any messages that had uh, has attachments so any spam messages has attachment has more details about the attachment here and then in the last one we have the send, uh, spam sender ip countries in uh, plotted in a map we have reports and alerts as well so rabbi with all the data that we are feeding into splunk uh, either from cloud security gateway or the other products from Frostpoint uh, that are uh, included in our uh, Frostpoint app can you use the data to generate alerts so splunk becomes also a trigger for activities if there are relevant events that need attention Yes, yeah, we that's the the two tabs are provided for that purpose. Now Splunk has this feature in it. So we have two alerts as an example here that email virus detection and that will trigger a, an alert in Splunk app so the administration will see it here in the tab. Unless they can change that, uh, I'll I'll go through it. And then for the that's for the email for the web uh, if the severity of the situation is critical then uh, trigger an alert as well so you could change that by edit alert and then you could change the trigger here and we have uh, multiple options as well cool so i guess there are three fantastic uh, capabilities here one is the ability to visualize the events and the security provided by the first point products Two yeah. is the ability to receive alerts when meaningful events require attention. So, you know, the IT guys don't have to watch the dashboard at 24 by 7. And third is the ability to do automated remediation or any other follow-up uh, just by using the Splunk app and the data analyzed by Splunk to trigger the remediation activities. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Rabbi, we didn't show or talked about uh, where the logs are from. So how do the customer get uh, the Cloud Security Gateway logs into Splunk? So uh, Cloud Security Gateway provides a uh, bring your own storage feature. And that could be an S that could be an S3 bucket implementation at the, mon at the moment for it. So from there, you do the configuration and Cloud Security Portal into your own uh, S3 bucket and then we have two integrations one to run automatically and sync from the S3 bucket into a directory local directory and then we have the Splunk forwarder integration which will monitor that directory and forward all that logs into your Splunk instance cool so actually the user could uh, store the logs locally in the machine that does the synchronization with the S3 bucket and those could be used also for other activities around it. Yeah, security. totally. Yeah. Cool. So I guess just a quick recap of this POC now. This integration POC provides customers of the first point cloud security gateway with a logs exporter component that retrieves the cloud security gateway logs and automatically forwards them into Splunk so that the events and insights on Cloud Security Gateway activities for either web or email security, or maybe both, can be visualized using the dashboards of our Splunk app and also correlated with other data available in the Splunk instance of the user. So, Ravi, thanks again for another great POC. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this episode of the podcast and stay tuned for more episodes.